Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Trading Futures Live, where we trade futures live every single day in front of the camera for you guys. Uh, my name is George. In this video, we're going to go over the ATM strategies here in Ninja. Um, I use them on all of my trades and I need to make some adjustments to mine, so I'm actually going to create a new one. So I figured I'd make a video for you guys and show you guys how it works. So the end. Uh, ATM strategy is called automatic trade management strategy that's what the ATM stands for automatic trade management and so we're gonna go ahead and we don't have one selected right now so we're gonna come here and we're gonna select custom you'll see that I have uh, my list of ones that I normally use today I used the 10 points by 8 but we're gonna start fresh and show you guys how it works so we're gonna go here to custom and it'll open up this window <clears throat> And so this is uh, where you'll set up all the custom strategy parameters. So for this strategy, I'm gonna wanna take 12 contracts instead of my usual eight. I'd like to be risking one and a half R instead of my usual one R of $400. In this strategy, I'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive uh, because it's an A to A plus setup of mine that I have a high expectancy of. And so I'm willing to be a bit more aggressive. I have a, a better win percentage on it. So. Uh, we're going to enter the trade with 12 contracts over here. This is good until cancel. This means that any order that you put on will uh, stay on until you cancel it. You can also select day, which will cancel the order at the end of the day, but I always use good till cancel. I'm not actually even sure what the GTD is. Um, no, that's GTC, but GTD? I don't know what the GTD one is, but... Um, and then here we have parameter types. So we have currency, percent, price, ticks, and pips. We trade futures, and futures are traded in ticks. So we're going to go in ahead and leave that as ticks. And then here we have basically our exit parameters, which is targets. And you can go ahead and add multiple targets. You can probably add as many as you want, up to probably like 10 or more. I'm, I've never, it's never actually limited me. In this scenario, I'm going to have four targets, at least for, for now as we work this out. And I'm going to show you guys my, my normal trade strategy. My target one uh, with my normal parameters, I'd probably be taking two of my contracts out uh, at target one. And then target two, I would take out half of my position. So I would be taking out six contracts. And then I always leave my final target with just one contract which means that this T3, I would have eight, nine, I would have three left out of 12. Um, so target three would be 12. Now my usual stop is 10 points on the ES, on the micro ES, which translates to 40 ticks. Everything in here is calculated in ticks because that's what we chose here. So your stop isn't by, I can't put in 10 points here. Uh, there's four, four ticks to a point. And I have a 10 point stop, so that's where the 40 ticks come in. Now, all of my targets are gonna have the same stop. So I'm gonna go ahead and put 40 in for each of them here. And then my profit. So my target one is usually always one to one. So that means 10 points. I'm risking 10 points. I'm gonna get out with 10 points the first two contracts. My second target is always two to one, which is 80. My third target, I normally go four to one. <clears throat> so that's 160 um, ticks. And then my final one, I leave it on as a runner and I practically go six to one uh, there. Now I'm actually gonna go over to the spreadsheet that I created uh, to go over what this means in dollars, right? Because that's all nice and dandy. Uh, as far as calculating it in ticks, but what does that uh, refer to in dollars? So when we talk about ticks, I trade the micro ES, right? So I trade the MES and every tick is a dollar twenty-five, is worth a dollar twenty-five. So when we're risking forty ticks uh, in a trade, <clears throat> when I have two contracts on and I'm risking uh, forty ticks, I'm actually risking a hundred dollars in this first target. So I'm risking $100 to make $100 on my first target. 
in my second target with six contracts. I'm still risking the same 40 points, but I have six contracts. So I'm risking $300 to make $600, right? This, I, I created this to, to uh, look very similar to the ATM strategy that we were calculating. Uh, where do I have that open there, right? We have the quantity of contracts, we have the stop loss, and then we have the profit. I have the same thing here. I have the quantity, the stop loss, and then I have the target, but I added these columns in between to show the dollar amount. So in total, in the trade that I calculated right now with two contracts at T1, six contracts at T2, three contracts at three, T3, and then my runner, totaling for 12 contracts, I'm risking $600 to make $1,600. So my risk to reward ratio is 2.67. And that's my normal, that's, that's how I have the majority of my strategies set up as far as exiting. I exit at one to one, at two to one, at four to one, and then I have a final runner. But I would like to make this number higher. I'd like to at least get this up towards three to one on my full... Uh, if I hit full target um, and really I'd like to see this get up closer to three to one even just when I'm hitting target three because target when I get to target three I'm actually at four to one um, as far as price is concerned but I haven't locked in I've, at that point I've only locked in thirteen hundred dollars which is about two point one seven to one right so I'm trying to get this up above two and a half um, and, and the final risk to reward up above three. So I have a, a blank one down here that we're gonna work on. And so instead of doing two, six, three, and one, we're gonna play with these numbers a little bit and see uh, how I can um, improve uh, this number and this number. Let me go ahead and highlight that number as well. Those are the two numbers that we're trying to improve upon, really. So let's say instead of two contracts at T1, I get out with one contract. And let's say at T2, I still get out with half of my position. Um, and then T3, I can potentially get out with four contracts instead of the three and then still have one runner. Let's see what that does for us. And so you'll see it did make an improvement, right? Overall, we went from 2.67 to 2.92 risk to reward. And getting out at T3, we're up near two and a half, but I'd still honestly like to see that up over two and a half and this near three, right? And so we're going to continue playing with these numbers. So what happens if I actually, instead of getting out with half of my position here, I get out with a third of my position and at T3, I get out with half of my position. And so now this is actually, it seems to be better overall, right? I'm getting out with two and three quarters, right? So that's a, a, over a half hour more here and uh, over a half hour more on the total risk to reward as well. So 3.25 and 2.75, that is actually um, much better. That is kind of like what I wanted to see. But my issue here is that once I get to T2, which is a two to one trade, if I hit target there, but I end up getting stopped out on the rest of the trade, I'm only making half an R, even though my trade went uh, nearly two to one. Now I'm making half an R because right now, <clears throat> I also, when I get to T2, I only move my risk, I, I, I move my stop up only by half. So normally I'm risking 10 points in my trade. When I get to T2, which is two to one, I only move my stop uh, up five points. So I'm still risking money in the trade, right? And me personally, I like to let my trades run, especially this type of breakout trade like we had today. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to squeeze my stop too much, uh, especially in the ATM strategy. I can manually move it myself uh, during the trade if I want, but in the ATM strategy, I don't want to. So we're going to continue messing with these numbers because although I like this the 2.75 and the 3.25 uh this half an r after my trade already went two to one is not going to be good for my psychology really right so what happens if i actually take off 
one contract there and and instead of scaling out at all at one to one we move this up let's let's take off half and let's take off five and we'll leave the one runner and so this is starting to look a little bit better um if we get to t2 uh we're still we lock in three quarters of an r instead of a full r um which i'm a little bit uh more okay with um let's see what happens if i make this six and zero right basically make a full three r at t3 um but still only three quarters of an r so not much actually changed there um But what you'll see, right, by taking off the two contracts that I scaled out in the beginning and adding those to my T3, so we still scale out with half a T2 and then five a T3, just making it to T3, I lock in 2.67, which was the total from this scenario up here. So I think we're going to go with this one right now. So I'm going to input these parameters into the ATM strategy that we were working on. So I'm essentially not going to have any T1, which means this T2 target is actually, I need to move it up, right? So we're going to get out here with six contracts. It's still going to be the same stop, 40, but T2 is two to one. So we're going to go 80. We can actually remove, we're only going to have three targets now. And then I had five. And then lastly, I had the runner, right? So my T2, five contracts, again, the same stop at 40, but this was four to one, so we're gonna go 160, and then my last runner, 240, right? Now comes the best part of um, the ATM strategy, in my opinion, is the stop strategy. Here's where you can start to uh, customize how your stop trails, right? And so when I get to T2, or sorry, T1, which is a two to one trade, I want my stop to autom automatically move up by half. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna create a custom stop strategy, and we're gonna say that once price gets to 80, so once price gets to 80 ticks, which is my first target here at two to one, I'm going to move my stop up from negative 40, from 40 ticks to 20 ticks. I'm going to cut it in half. So it, here it actually becomes a negative. We don't want it to go into positive territory. We want to, we want to, I'm just going to reduce my risk in half. Um, but what I don't want it to do is to pull back to my entry, stop me out, break even for the rest of my trade, and then keep on going on without me. So I, I only reduce my risk in half. And that's what we're going to do there. And then we're going to save this custom stop strategy parameter. And we're going to save the template. And we'll call this um, uh, this is a 10 point uh, T1 trailing. All right, you can name it whatever you want, um, but that's what I'm gonna name this one right now. So again, once price gets to 80 ticks, it's gonna reduce my risk in half from negative 40 ticks to 20 ticks. I'm gonna go ahead and save that and then now calculated it there. Now, I actually had that in the wrong spot, right? Because we actually do not want a stop strategy on the first one. We're going to wait for it to get to hit target before it reduces the risk in half. So we're going to add that 10 point T1 trailing strategy to my second target, which means for these five contracts, when price gets to 80 uh, ticks, these five contracts will move up and reduce the risk in half, which is perfect. And then we want the same thing for our final trailing, uh, our final runner as well. We want it to trail up. Now, 
that only moves the stop up one time when price gets to 80. But what happens if price then gets to 160? Well, we can continue editing this and you can then add some additional auto trail um, parameters as well. So instead of none, we're going to come here and we're going to uh, select step one or one step. And they kind of confuse you here by placing this backwards. So what we want here is, let's say when price gets to three to one, three to one in this scenario is 120 ticks, right? When price gets to three to one, 120 ticks, we want the stop to trail again. And in this scenario, let's say we want to trail it by 2R, which is 80 ticks. That means the stop is going to move up to plus 40. Sorry. The stop is going to be the 80, which is the full 2R. So when price gets to 120, it's going to put a stop 80 points, 80 ticks behind that. Um, locking in 1R at that point. It'll basically move the stop up to plus 10 points. Price is at 30 points and it's going to move up the stop from negative 5 points up to positive 10 points. So you're going to lock in 1R on that contract. And then it asks you here for a frequency. And this refers to how often that stop continues to trail up. So it won't trigger until it gets to 120. But then right now, every tick that this continues to go up, so if it goes from 120 to 121, this is going to continue to trail. Now, I don't want it to trail on every tick. So I'm going to say that, let's say, as price goes one another, an additional 1R, it's going to continue to trail up, which means every 40 ticks. So from 120, it's going to move the stop, but then it's going to wait for it to go another 40 ticks and get to 160 before it moves the stop again and locks in another R. And so I'm going to go ahead and save this template again. I'm going to save it as the same one. Saved. Do you want to replace it? Yes. And then I can hit OK. And now I'm going to refresh this one as well. And I can go ahead and save this template. And then this template I'm going to call 10-point breakout. Uh, and I put X12 so that I know that there's 12 contracts, okay? So this is specifically for the type of trade I took today, which was a breakout trade. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, and I can hit OK, and now you'll see that it has created an automatic, um, tra an advanced trade management strategy for, with a 10-point stop. It's for when I take breakouts, and it's 12 contracts, and you'll see the order quantity there. So when I come here and it's selected, I can buy limit 12 and it will do exactly the strategy that I put there. It will trade it the way I selected it there. And hopefully this video was helpful. That's how you uh, create an ATM strategy. And that's how the uh, stop strategies work inside of it. Uh, you can always come back here and edit them, right? You can come back here and edit and change any parameters or you can make some duplicates or you can adjust the targets. Um, there's even more additional things that uh, the ATM strategy can do down here, but I actually don't use any of them. Um, so again, hopefully this video was helpful and uh, we'll catch you guys in, an, in another video. Have a good one.